I'm Jim Symes. I worked at the Royal Greenwich Observatory at Hurstmonceux from 1954 to 1955. I was in the Cosmic Ray Department, which was new, and uh, it was set up under the auspices of Professor Tommy Gold, and the department itself consisted of two people. Um, my boss, who was, uh, her name was Don Palmer, and uh, myself. I was a, a lowly scientific assistant, um, 23 years old, and had been seconded from the post office engineering department. And of course in those days everybody was known by their surname. Christian names were unheard of. I think in deference I probably used to call him Mr Palmer. I, I, I remember the letter of appointment um, which uh, was signed very grandly by somebody by command of um, the, the Lords of the Admiralty. I know that impressed me greatly. Mm. Um, what didn't impress me quite so much was the salary. I can't remember the exact figures. It, it was around about £500 a year. Um, and it was, a, it was less than I was earning in the Post Office Engineering Department. But I thought, it, and I'm sure it was a good, I mean, I enjoyed it anyway, but it, it was a good move career wise. It, mm. The experience was great. My job was to actually construct. Um, a cosmic ray monitor. Now this was uh, because Professor Gold who had persuaded the Astronomer Royal at the time, Sir Harold Spencer Jones, to set up this facility and the, the monitor was intended to, to provide data which would be used for the International Geophysical Year and um, Don Palmer actually did all the detailed electronic uh, design of the of the device to, to, to a standard and I had to physically make it and then subsequently um, deal with the, the data that was coming out of it, um, you know, transcribing the data and so on. We were in fact counting the number of cosmic ray particles falling at ground level which was something that had probably hadn't been done in a controlled way previously. And the idea was to monitor um, an area of one square meter and this was done by means of a bank of Geiger-Müller tubes which happened to be one meter long and we, we had 20 of these tubes side by side so it formed a square one meter by one meter. It only you only registered a pulse if, as I say, you've got this um, three pulses occurring virtually simultaneously. Mm. Now you had to do something with that bit of information, so it was fed to an electromechanical counter, which was actually um, uh, a counter used by the post office engineering department to record telephone call times. And it literally, it was an electromechanical, bit like a, a myelometer, an old-fashioned myelometer on a clock, on a car, uh, so that every pulse it clicked over one, and you could uh, obviously add up the number of pulses over a period of time. One of the little party tricks I I, I did, we, we had a lot of visitors, as you can imagine. It was something that was of interest, and. Um, I arranged to, uh, to have a, an amplifier and a loudspeaker which I connected to the uh, output from the, the counters so that you could actually hear each time a particle went through the array. And turning this on, the sound produced by these cosmic ray particles falling on this one meter square of monitoring surface it sounded exactly like hail on a tin roof and people always went away just thinking a bit when they heard that you know to realize that this radiation i mean it's falling on us now as we as we speak here today doesn't seem to do us any harm as far as we know but it, it's interesting and uh, um Fred Hoyle was a great hero of mine so one of the great joys of working there was that the likes of he and of course Tommy Gold were frequent visitors and uh, this great hero of mine you know to have him sitting on the corner of the desk chatting was a, a great thing. I remember was that he was and in those days people were much more formal but he was very casually dressed I remember he, he reminded me of a, 
a chap who, a farmer who just walked in from the fields in a way. He, he spoke with, you, you know, uh, in a very informal way and was a generally nice bloke, I thought. And I had a little workshop in the, we were based, I think, probably the second floor of the castle. Mm -hmm. uh, I was on in the um, southwest corner. Okay. Uh, in, and my little workshop and storeroom was in one of the turrets. Mm -hmm. And our main lab was a big room off that and then we had a little office as well. Um, one of the great joys was lunchtime, if the weather wasn't that good, I used to go into the library. I had a magnificent library mm. with a priceless collection of, I think, every book on astronomy that's ever been published. And um, apart from the books, the, the, in the middle of the room there was a huge oval table which I believe belonged to Admiral Nelson. And all around the periphery of the table was a, a collection of uh, current technical journals of every description. So that was a, a, a great, great place to go lunch times. If the weather was good we used to go and walk in the gardens which were well maintained even then. And uh, yeah, it's a great place to work. I lived in Hastings at the time and uh, travelled by train to Pevensey Bay Halt. Um, a lot of people came from Hastings, Bexhill, Eastbourne uh, by train. And uh, we were met at the station every morning by a um, Royal Naval bus uh, in dark blue and uh, taken to the castle and similarly uh, in, in the afternoon or evening uh, taken back to the station. At the time I, I had done national service and uh, national servicemen had to do two weeks army emergency reserve training every year and my couple of weeks came just prior to some exams I was taking at the time and um, Sir Harold Spencer Jones very kindly wrote a nice letter, which I've, I still have actually, oh. actually, which I'm rather proud of, um, oh. which um, he, uh, he, he wrote for me um, to the, uh, the commanding officer of the um, reserve unit asking if um, Mr Symes, uh, who was taking exams very shortly, could be given some time off for, for study. And uh, this obviously impressed the army authorities no end because I don't think I did any army training at all. I spent the whole two weeks revising, which was really good. So um, I'm very grateful to the Astronomer Royal for that. Because I was a, a, a bloke who could make things, um, um, I think, again, Don Palmer designed a, a light meter for the solar telescope. Mm -hmm. and. I constructed that and I think I actually fixed it, screwed it to the telescope, you know, and so that was good. The other thing which I got roped into, I think probably when they were short of staff, the, um, the MET section, um, they had to take, um, you know, daily uh, MET readings and uh, I was sometimes roped in for that, so I uh, used to go stroll up the, up the hill to the um, Stevenson screen and uh, do you know the met readings there mm -hmm. periodically so i got involved in that it was only a year but it it was pretty important and uh, I, i'm you know very glad to have worked there and proud to have worked there really and you know slightly rub shoulders with some of these heroes of mine